Hello, in this video we're going to find the distribution for a sum of negative binomial random variables using the moment generating function technique. So what that means is we're going to let xi be negative binomial ri p as the parameters. p is the probability of an event, ri is the number of events that we want to see and then we stop. Uh, xi are independent and our goal is to find the distribution of y, which is the sum of these independent negative binomial random variables. Okay, so first what we want to do is find the moment generating function for one of these x's. And then we'll apply that to this sum. Okay, so the moment generating function for x. And we're going to drop the i for, for this development, but you could do that. You could put it in. So the moment generating function for x is expected value of e to the tx, which says stick in e to the tx times the probability mass function summed over all possible values for the negative binomial. And for more details on a negative binomial, I have uh, several videos now on negative binomial, so if you just search that term, you, you should find them. And so now let's expand what this probably mass function is, which is this combinations uh, p raised to r 1 minus p to the i. And this is again summed over all possible values. So what we do now is we take this um, e to the t into this piece and um, combine them. Right? So that i raised to the i and we get this. Now this next step I'm going to skip the details in this video, but in another video, I provide all the details. So this combinations, and the video is why is it called a negative binomial distribution? And we go into great detail of why this equals what I'm getting ready to show you. Now, this part two, mean and variance of a negative binomial distribution, you can watch that if you want more details on a negative binomial. But this next step is on uh, the first point here. Okay, so this p, yeah, so so this pr comes out front, and this piece comes straight down, and this combinations is equal to this. Now this piece is what's called a general binomial coefficient. Uh, the general binomial theorem is what's used to do it. And of course, this is just minus 1 to the i. Now, in this video, we also provide details that this piece right here is an expansion of this term right here. Okay, And again, this video is details. Now, some like to think about this as like if we bring this term in here, because they're both raised to the i, and call that minus e to the tx, that, and then of course this stays the same. Some people like to think about it like that, where instead of having this alternating signs, but either way it, it boils down to this piece right here. So now this negative r, this piece can be taken down below, and since both are raised to the r, then we get this. And this is the moment generating function for a negative binomial. Now one of the assumptions on this conversion is that this piece is less than 1, which then implies that t is less than this. So that requirement has to be met. Now let's let xi be negative binomial rip. Okay. Then uh, of course the xi are independent. We want to find the distribution for y which is the sum of these xi's. So we're going to find the moment generating function for y, which is this. So it's the expected value of e to the ty, but then we can plug in what we know about y is the sum of these xi's. And when you have a sum in the exponent, that's really like the product. But each of these xi's are independent. And so we can look at the expectations individually. So it's the product of these xi, this term here, these product these moment generating functions for each xi. And and we just, on page one, we showed this is the moment generating function for a negative binomial, RIP, 
the product. Well, this product, since this is the same, it's constant for each term or each, you know, then we just add the exponents. But this right here is the general form of a moment generating function for a negative binomial with this parameter and, and p. And so that implies that y is a negative binomial with the sum of the ri's as a parameter times p. And there we go. And in the next video, we're going to make use of this and show that a negative binomial has a normal distribution and limit as, as, as r goes to infinity. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.